What's going on fishermen? It's Catterman here. Today I want to talk to you guys about the beginning of an installment series on how to catch catfish. So I'm sure most of you have heard about catfish and I'm sure most of you want to catch catfish. Catfish are a nice species of fish to catch with your friends, your buddies, and the nice thing is you don't got to be walking miles <laughs> off bank just to catch a few fish. You get to sit down with your buddies, share some good stories, have a good time, and enjoy the outdoors, how it should be enjoyed. Sitting in a chair and waiting for that rod tip to start. Bing, 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 going off. One of the most important parts when it comes to catching catfish is to have the right type of bait. Now, first off, you need, we need to think about, you know, what kind of catfish are we targeting? Now, if we're targeting the big three predatory North American catfish and South, well, yeah, South American, I guess. I don't know. Let's call it North American. Yeah. Channel catfish. Blue catfish. Flathead catfish. And now my favorite bait, and it's my favorite because it's lively and it's easy to get. And most of these three catfish species do feed on these fish pretty heavily. And those are bluegill. Today I want to talk to you about how you're going to catch these bluegill. Bluegill are some of the easiest fish to catch. They're the most straightforward and they're great beginner fish for many kids to catch too. So the first thing you're going to need before we do this is a couple of the setups. So first off, we have a nice little spinning, set, spinning setup over here. In case you guys are wondering what I'm using, I'm using the Casking Summer right here in, I believe this is the 2000 size, the smallest size with about eight pound monofilament on here. I wouldn't go more than eight pound line, 10 pounds already a little bit too much, so try to stick to six or eight pound. To catch keeper size sunfish, now every state has different regulations on how big, but I like to have bigger sunfish because you'll get more bait out of it. We're gonna be using a J head. Now, since it's very light out right now, we're gonna be using a pink and very light jig head. If it were dark eyed, we'd want to use a black one or uh, you know a brown one or something darker. After that, we've got a bobber. Now this one's already pretty large. I like to use smaller bobbers usually, but we can work with this. Usually the lighter the bobber, the easier it is for the fish to hook itself because they don't detect any resistance. Next you're gonna just need a box for your bait because we need to have bait for sunfish. And I like to catch my own bait. A quick, easy plastic container with a nice lid on it that you poke some holes through so the worms can breathe. And last but not least for the worms, before we get anything started, a shovel. Let's get to work and then we can catch some bluegill, which are going to be catfish bait. All right, we got a couple of worms. Let's get going to the pond, the local water body. Let's catch our bait. All right, well, we've arrived at our fishing location. And what we have is there's a lake up over here to the left. And we've got the pool where all the water comes down and empties out into here. So when it rains, especially this pool is really, really, really quickly moving. Now we're in the summer right now. It is July 17th. It is hot out. So these bait fish are going to want a place where they can still get a lot of oxygen. And right here they've got it. These sunfish are going to be picking at insects and all kinds of things that are coming right out of all these little weed beds that are floating around. So what we need to do is we need to put our baits closer to the top. And I think over here we're going to be doing about, let's see, about a foot, let's say. So now we're going to take the worm, a worm, like this little fella right over here. We're going to tear a piece off. So we're not going to use the whole worm, just going to tear a piece off. And I usually start with a tail piece. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to thread. You're going to put this hook 
right through the worm. Like this, you're gonna thread the hook right through there, all the way through till the end. So basically the jig head is covered right here. So now we're gonna throw, as you can see, the water's coming right through over there, it's rushing in, and there's already a couple sunfish popping over there along the top. We're gonna be throwing it right on the outside of that. There should be a couple of sunnies hanging out right underneath these weed beds. Nope, not there. So now we're gonna throw a little bit closer right over here with a rushing water. Right on the outskirts. Because they're gonna be waiting for any piece of bait to come rushing down through this water column and then they're gonna pick it up. So now we just wanna wait for them to grab the bait. Oh man, we almost have one, you see that? When you see them pull the bobber down like that and hold it down for a while, that's when you go to set the hook. Oh, whoa, look at that, how quick was that, huh? See? And now here we go. Now this is a perfect size sunfish right here. That's great bait. Excellent bait. I'm gonna let him go today. He's lucky. And this is a male, by the way. When they're this colorful, it's a male. The less colorful, really pale ones are the females. So since sunfish are a very abundant bait source, that's why they're so great. And you know, I've had plenty of flathead catfish love picking dead ones up too and chunked sunfish. Now there's a specific way also to grab these guys. You want to have your hand like this. You want to grab them like this. Keep the tension on the line and you're going to slide your hand down. So you're going to slide those dorsal fins down because they have spikes on them. So now we're going to remove the hook. There we go. There's one there. And now you're going to see if that's where one was, there are going to be more right over there stacked up. Oh, there you go. Sit up. Oh, there was almost another one. You see that, guys? So now we know where they're at. Once you've located the bait source and the sunfish, you're going to be tearing them up and you're going to be causing hell for them because you're going to know where they are and you're going to have them figured out. And that's how every bait fishing session starts. Figure out the bait fish, figure out their pattern for the day, and you are golden. Oh man, did you guys see that? Literally the moment the bait just hit the water. Again, they stole the worm, so we're gonna thread this worm right through the hook again. There you go. And at the end, I like to actually pierce the skin, so the hook has a place to hold if they're trying to suck that worm off like a noodle. Yep, there we go. We let him take it. We watch the bobber start to swim away really quickly. And you're gonna see with these jig heads too, you're gonna get better hookups and they're not gonna swallow the hook like they usually do. This is a paler sunfish, so this is a female. During the later, or should I say earlier summers, bluegills do start to spawn. So please try to stay away from the females. We open our hand, we keep tension on the line. We line it up, we line it up like that. See, we slide our hand down. We've immobilized the sunfish, pop her off, let her go. And there you go. Pop a couple of those together. Make sure you have ice on you, or if you're gonna take them live, take a bucket with an aerator, and you've got your perfect, abundant bait right there. There are different baits out there. You can use worms too, you can use squid, you can use chicken livers. But if you wanna catch big catfish, you wanna catch fish that have been around the water body for a long time, you wanna catch channel catfish that are bigger than five pounds, six pounds, you need to use what they're feeding on. Now, I'm using and catching sunfish because there's so many all around here on the East Coast and basically every water body, but if there's creek chubs around in a creek and that's where you're fishing for them, or in a river, or there's a lot of white perch, it's basically you'll catch them the same way as what we're doing right now. And those are going to be great bait sources too. But in the end, natural bait always catches the biggest fish. One more, because this is actually kind of fun. All right, maybe these guys are kind of smart. Maybe it's not that fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Catfish Basics 101. 
we are just getting started, okay? So this is just the beginning. This is for you guys really wanting to start getting into catfishing. Next thing we're gonna talk about is the basic bottom rig for catfishing. We're gonna talk about a just plain monofilament one and a braid and monofilament one. We're gonna talk about bottom structure. We are about to talk about how to read a river and where to find different species of catfish in different regions of the river. We're gonna talk about season changes. We're gonna talk about depth indications. We're gonna talk about ledges. We're basically gonna cover everything. So, you know what? Subscribe to the channel if you guys like what you're seeing and if you're interested. I will get back to you again very soon with how to do the bottom rig. Then we will also talk about how to hook your bait, how to make sure you take as much care of each piece of bait, how to judge the bait size so that you can have the best hookup ratios and catch the most catfish possible. Well, thanks you guys for tuning in. I will see you guys next time. Catterman, out!